Hi, everybody. We'll start in a second once everyone is in the in the Zoom and out of the waiting room. Right. We'll go ahead and get started and people can jump in when they get here. Um, thank you all for getting on. I know 6 p.m. on a Monday night, usually people have things going on. Um, I'll try and keep it quick and short and give you as much information as possible um, without keeping you all night long. Um, I'm Mac. If you haven't met me before, you've emailed me in the past couple weeks. Um, hopefully you've gotten a response back. Um, the emails that came in over the weekend, I managed to get through all of them today. So if you are waiting to hear back from me, um, and you emailed me before 4.30 PM today, you should have gotten an email from me, um, responding to your email. Um, in the next couple of weeks, a lot of emails are coming in. So if you don't get a response to me right away, um, we do say like, wait 48 hours. Um, I normally don't take that long. Usually I can get do it within 24 hours, but just know that if I don't respond to you right away, I am working through my emails. I probably just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but with that said, we'll go and get started. Um, we're just going to kind of go through a couple things about the season. This is the micros and minis Zoom call. So anyone who's coaching a micros team or is a team parent for a micros team, um, info for you will be on here. And then our minis program for both pre-K and kindergarten. Um, so a lot of different kind of things going on, but kind of the same. Um, so we'll work through that. Um, we'll talk about a little bit about lounge soccer. If you're new and kind of just an intro to the club, um, key contacts, who's going to be the important people to email. Um, for example, if you're trying to get something for your practice rescheduled, this is mainly for kindergarten coaches. Um, I've already gotten a lot of emails about practice stuff. Um, I don't do the practice schedule, so not the best person to email about that. I'll usually just forward your email to Jamie, who does the practice schedule, um, but we'll put her email in here so you, you can just email her directly um, and try and just make your life easier that way. Uh, we'll go over some key policies for the season, um, things about communicating to your team, things you're going to want to let them know, um, and then just some things about the program, um, especially if you're a new coach and not really sure what's going on. We'll kind of go through like what to expect, things that you're going to want to know, um, just so that you have all the information that you need. Um, this is kind of just our development framework for our whole club, not just our rec program, but kind of just the different options that you have. Um, you start at the micros and your minis level as kind of the youngest that we have. And then we have rec programs going all the way up through high school. So um, you can really participate in lawn soccer strictly on the rec side up until you graduate high school. Um, after first grade, so uh, eight years old, you can then transfer to our travel program. Um, we have our U8 Academy and then U9 is our first year of travel. Um, so that's an option to um, just kind of have something for everybody. My slide's not moving. Oh, I'm moving the wrong slide. That work? Can I see my slide now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Um, this is the slide I was on. Um, so you can kind of just see the different things that we offer, um, what we work on through all the ages, people who are hesitant to coach at our pre-K and kindergarten level because they have no coaching experience. If that's you, that's totally okay because we're just here to have fun. Like at our pre-K level, like kids are just running around. It's not it's not anything crazy. Um, so this kind of just outlines what we look for, um, what options we have, and what kind of that looks like at each level. Um, here are some of our year-round opportunities that we have besides just our regular in-season, um, like fall and spring season. Um, we have supplemental programs uh, during the fall, during the spring. We also have them during the winter. Um, so we can you can do Rec TA, which is a program you can sign up for. And then we have our winter indoor clinics that you can sign up for. Um, and then during the summer, we have summer camps. Those are week-long summer camp options that you can sign your kid up for and they can come. Um, pretty sure it's like nine 
connected to every day. Um, and you can sign up from a week to week basis. Um, our supplemental programs are really great for anyone who is looking to get something extra. So those are run by our travel coaches, our paid trainers. Um, so if you have a player on your team that's really looking for something more, they're probably someone's going to want to do travel in the future and they want kind of something a little extra, a little um, intro to what travel looks like, this would be a good thing to offer them. That would be our rec TA in um, kindergarten or older option. Um, and then we also have one day events. If you've signed up for our free play day a little while ago, um, that's an example. Um, we do those kind of throughout the year at different times. It's not really a set date that happens every single season, but uh, we advertise it and it's just kind of a day where you can pay to come out for the day and it's something special, something extra that you can do. Um, our online coaching support, this is gonna be really helpful for anyone who feels like they want more resources. Um, you can go to loudinsoccer.com, which all of you guys have been to before because you've registered, um, and under the rec tab, and then under the coaches tab, we have a lot of information. There's two different places you can go. You can go to the coaches info center, which is going to have kind of rules, um, procedures, um, our safe sport concussion training. So if you're coaching kindergarten, that's where you'll find a lot of materials like uh, 4v4 is what we play, 10, four 10-minute quarters, kind of outlining what that looks like. So when you go into the season, you know, like kind of what's going on. Um, and then our coaching education resource center, that's for anything you need, like session plans, any materials, any ideas for things to do at practice. Um, you can find all of that there. So ideally, the way we set it up is you won't have to plan anything for the entire season. If you want to, that's fantastic. And that's great. And you're more than welcome to do that. But if you want to go to our coaches education source center and just pull up your session plan each week and use that, it's very detailed, tells you exactly what to do, how to set it up, um, and you can just go off that. So it's very user friendly. Um, that's why in all of our emails, we really do say you don't need any coaching experience because we lay it all out for you if you want. Um, equipment pickup and on-field clinic. If you've coached before, um, pay attention. Don't zone out because this is different than in the past. Um, and that has a lot to do with when spring break falls. Um, normally we have one day and it's a Saturday and you can come from one time to one time and pick up all your stuff. Um, spring break falls on a weird week. So we didn't do that this time. Instead, you can come from today till Thursday, the 21st between 10 and 7 PM to pick up your equipment. So you can stop by whenever works for you. Um, whether it's, it's, like one to five, or if you need to come after work, you can come from until seven and you can pick up all your equipment here at Loudon Soccer Park. Um, and then our coaches on-field clinic, instead of it being on one Saturday, um, we have coaches from our club that have agreed to kind of help out and you can come to any club session. Um, you're just going to want to reach out to me or Darren to kind of set that up. But you'll come out, you'll watch a practice, kind of see what that looks like. It'll be on our travel side, so they run really, really well, um, and you'll kind of, kind of get an idea of what that looks like and what to expect going into it. Um, team rosters, if you aren't aware, which hopefully everyone is, those are posted on Friday. Um, some changes may happen between last Friday and the next couple days. It's really, really hard to get everything 100% right the first time, just with how large of a program we are. Um, and then you have people who oh, want something they didn't actually put oh, in the registration. Um, there's a whole lot of factors. So you may see a change here or there in your roster. Hopefully it's something major. Just keep an eye on that because if you haven't sent out your email yet, or if you have already sent it out and you notice a new person's added to your roster, you're gonna wanna make sure that they get that information as well. Um, and then players can only participate if they're actually on your roster. So they have to be officially assigned to your roster on your team page. If you have a random mm -hmm. kindergartner show up on a Monday at your field and want to participate, um, you're going to want to have them email me or reach out to me so we can figure out where they're supposed to be if they're on a team and try and get them registered if they're not on a team. Um, and then this is really for anyone reaching out to you about being on your team. Try not to make any guarantees or promises because Again, like we do everything we can to make things happen. We want you guys to have a good um, a good time. We want it to be a good experience. So we do try and make everything happen the way you want it to, but sometimes we just can't. Um, so, and it really stinks if a coach has been like, yeah, you can definitely be on our team 100% and then they email me and I, I have to be like, no, actually, sorry. Um, we can't do that. So 
try not to give any promises, but if anyone wants to be on your team, have them email me, you can reach out to me and we can see if we can make that work. Um, team officials, so this is kind of coaches, team parents, that's what that means. Um, you have to register. So all of you are registered. This mainly kind of applies to if you have someone who wants to be an assistant coach. Um, the more assistant coaches, the better. Like we always like the extra support. We just need to make sure that they're in our system so we know who's where um, and we, everyone's accounted for and we kind of know what's going on. So um, if you have an assistant coach already, that's great. Um, if you don't and you want one, um, you can always in your intro email, let people know you are looking for one or you can at your first practice, at, you know, go up to the parents and be like, hey, I'm looking for someone to help me out. Um, kind of just be an assistant coach. People love being an assistant coach because they don't have to be a head coach. Um, people are usually really, really down to help out. Um, so just go ahead and ask. Like if you're looking for that and you kind of feel like that might be helpful for you, don't be afraid to ask your parents because usually someone volunteers. It's really pretty easy on their part. Um, and then I kind of talked about that already. Um, yeah, we cover all that. So just make sure everyone's listed. And if you want someone, go there and me, have them register, and we can add them to your page. Um, required equipment is a kind of all generic <laughs> things. Um, jerseys are provided for I can't everyone hear you, Papa. from micros to no, Papa, no. I'm not done. We give you the uniform jersey. So when you come pick up your equipment this week, that's something that you're going to be given. And then at your first practice, if you're a kindergarten coach or at your first Saturday session for pre-K and micros, you can hand out those jerseys. Um, we don't take individual sizes for each kid because we have like 7,000 players. <laughs> so that would be really hard. Um, but if you have someone that like really can't fit into the shirt, like it's like they cannot wear it. That's we have extras here of different sizes. You can have them email me and they can come by and we can try and exchange that for a different size. Um, don't advertise that because then we'll have a lot of people coming by but if someone comes out and they're like hey this doesn't fit then just know that you can email me and we can work that out um as far as what players are going to need if anyone asks you they're going to need the jersey that you give them um a ball which is a size three um shin guards a water bottle um and then approved shoes so you don't have to have cleats obviously it's recommended but it should be running around in flip-flops uh, make sure they have at least tennis shoes like closed-toed shoes would be great um no jewelry um this is really kind of more on the rec side since they play like rec one first grade and up because since they play games um but if there's anything crazy just like we don't want dangling earrings like we don't want anyone to get hurt so that's really the main thing um if they have like a plastic bracelet on like i think that's okay but um just keep an eye on that and then hard casts we don't say no one we don't say anyone can't participate at the cast. Just make sure it's bubble wrapped or covered completely so no one gets whacked in the head. You don't want a third grader running around with no um no coordination and hit someone's head with their hard cast and then that's a problem. So um just keep an eye on that because there's no referee there. So that'll be up to be kind of your discretion. Um uniform equipment. Uh, we do have a Dick's Sporting Goods night. That's kind of the main thing on this page to look for. Um, August 20. That doesn't make sense. I'll fix that. We will have a, a Dick's Sporting Goods night. They'll have a specific date on there. And then you'll be able to get a discount. But stay tuned. March 30th through April 1st. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, that's not going to that's not going to work. August is not is not the right date. Um, and then, yeah, so this is good to tell your families. I don't know if it's in the template email already, um, but if they need to get stuff because they don't have it already, they can get a discount on that date. So just good for you to know. Um, uniforms, we talked about this already. You'll pick it up with your equipment um, and that should be great. Um, this is kind of just going to go over safety reminders real quick. Um, no heading the balls at this age. Um, try and keep the all soccer balls on the ground, that'd be awesome. Um, again, this is kind of less applicable to you guys since you have kindergarten and younger. Um, but if you suspect anyone gets a concussion, say someone falls and hits their head on the ground really hard, um, don't make them play, let them kind of take a break. Their parents are gonna be there. So usually they'll handle this part. Um, but just let me know, like if anything actually serious happens, um, whether it's a concussion or someone like breaks their arm or like someone gets serious, injured it's good just to let me know so I'm in the know and that and I can follow up with the family make sure that they're good um, and everything's kind of okay there 
Um, no slide tackling. We talked about no heading. Um, weather and fields. So this is this is kind of more applicable to you guys. So anything that happens with weather um, for kindergartners for your weekday practices. Um, Lightning is going to be your call. We're not going to have someone at the field kind of making that decision. So if it lightnings during your session, um, just go ahead and cancel your session. If it happens right at the beginning and you want to wait 30 minutes, go ahead and do that. You'll have 30 minutes left. Um, but if it happens in the middle, like you just have to your discretion. You don't want to wait 30 minutes just to have 10 minutes left in your practice. So um, ultimately, it's up to you what you and your team want to do. The only non-negotiable is that you leave the field when you see lightning for at least 30 minutes. Um, anything else, so like Saturday game decisions, um, say it's raining Friday night, Saturday morning, and you're not sure if we're going to have our games on our sessions on Saturday, you will always hear from me based off that decision. So um, if it's raining and you haven't gotten an email from me that it's canceled, it's really, really safe to assume that we're still on. Um, cause we're never going to cancel and then not tell you. So, um, just to keep that in mind. Um, so check your email Friday, Saturday, if you assume that like something might happen, be checking your email. Cause that was, that's how we're going to communicate that to you. Um, and then closure information that'll also be emailed. So if a session is canceled and we say, we're not going to play, um, that'll get emailed to you as well. There was only one, I think there was only one week last year where we had to call it in the middle of Saturday, where like it really looked fine for the beginning of the day. And then all of a sudden it got really bad. Um, but most of the time, I think we're able to call it before we have any session. So be checking Friday night, check Saturday morning before you go, um, just so that you can be in the know of that. Um, and then team communication going after that. Once you get the email from us that it's canceled, make sure you forward that onto your team because we're not going to email everybody all this information. We're just going to communicate that to the coaches. Um, so then once you get that email from us, make sure you kind of let your teams know, hey, this is what Lawn Soccer said. Um, and then we can go from there. Um, and then as far as other communication goes, um, if you haven't sent out your welcome email to your team, your parents are waiting for that. They're, they're going to be expecting that just to hear from you. Um, just say hi, introduce yourself. We have a template that you can follow um, that kind of tells you what to say, and you can just kind of fill in the blanks that is specific to you. Um, but make sure you send that out if you haven't yet. Um, and then as much or as little communication as you want, really, I feel like the the basis of what we ask for is that you just keep families to know of important things. Um, it's always good to kind of send out an email before week one, reminding people of where to be, um, especially the younger ages. If um, if you're like a micros three, micros four team parent, a lot of those parents are new to lawn soccer. So they're not kind of used to kind of what to expect. And so the more information you can give them, the better. Um, but just, yeah, just make sure you're communicating the important things. Because for the most part, we're not going to communicate every piece of information to every parent that's involved. We're just going to go through the head coaches. Um, so forwarding that along is important. Um, these are some important dates to note down. Um, if you want to write it down, that's great. This will be posted on the website so you can see it later if you want to. Um, rosters were released on the 15th. This is the coach's Zoom call. Congrats, you made it. Um, equipment pickup, 18th to the 21st. Remember, it's 10 to 7 p.m. You can come anytime. Um, that's at Loudon Soccer Park. And then on the 27th, your game schedule will be released. You should have the first practice. So if this is for kindergartners. You should have your first practice in your schedule already. If you don't, you can email Jamie. Um, you won't have anything else in your calendar until the 27th. So for micros and pre-K coaches who don't have a practice during the week, you won't have anything in your calendar yet. And then on 27th, you'll have your Saturday session put in there. Um, so just be looking for that. Um, and then first week, first week practice for kindergartners is going to be that week leading up to the 6th. So Saturday, April 6th is our first Saturday of the season. So that week leading up to it is when your practice is going to start. So if you requested a Tuesday practice, the Tuesday before April 6th is going to be your first practice. And again, that that one should be in your calendar. The rest will be added later. And then the final Saturday of the season is May 18th. Um, so for kindergarten coaches, this is important for you to know. Um, you're allocated half a field and each field has two goals. So you have the goal that's on your half of the field. Um, you may get lucky and end up with a full field if you happen to request the the perfect time, the perfect day, the perfect 
everything, location that just so happens to not have a lot of coaches there. You may find yourself with a full field, but just know that that's not guaranteed and it's not regular procedure. Um, but it's regular procedure is you're going to have a field and have one goal. So you should have another team using the other half for your fear of your field. Um, feel free to, if you are on the field with, it's kind of just like an add in. If you're on the field with someone else and you have low numbers, um, feel free to mix in together. Like we're all kind of in this together. And if you see a coach on the other half of your field who has four players there, um, feel free to mix your, your practice together. Um, it's okay to not be totally segregated into your teams. Um, and it helps out that coach. It's really hard to run a practice of four players. Um, I know you guys know that. I know with my travel team, anytime I have less than five, I got, it's just, it's not very fun for the players or the coaches involved. So work together. Um, if that's the scenario you find yourself in, um, mix up, do it together. It's fun. Um, get to know each other. We're all friends here. Um, and then again, like we talked about earlier, if you want to use those pre-made session plans, they're on our um, Loud Soccer website. So just go ahead and look there. Um, and then just as a general rule, if I'm trying to end five minutes early, you can end, get off the field and do your little like talk with your team off the field. That just allows the coach who's coming after you to kind of get on and get set up. Um, that way they don't have to kind of run into their practice time while you're trying to clean up everything and get off the field. Um, Saturday schedules we talked about, they're going to be published on the 27th. Double check your details. Like I said earlier with the rosters, like it's really hard to get everything right the first time. So if you're a dual coach, you're head coaching two teams and we've emailed you and said, we're going to deconflict your schedule. And then you get your schedule and one of your games is conflicted. Um, before you send me an email, that's really angry. Um, <laughs> that's like, it's not on purpose. Um, and we can fix that for you. So just shoot me an email. Let me know like what game you have a conflict. Um, and we can move some things around. We'll make it work for you. Um, we want to help you. That's why I'm here. My job is to help you. So just know that if something happens, you can always email and reach out to me. And we'll fix it. Um, double check your details and times week to week. So, um, don't check your schedule one time when it's released and then never check it again. Um, because I will probably get emails from people saying that things kind of weren't accurate the first time. And so that may impact your schedule, get to move some things around a little bit. Um, and you don't want to look at it one time, write it all in your calendar and then never look again. Cause if that gets changed and you don't know, then you're going to show up to the wrong field, maybe at the wrong time. And then that that's the problem. So just be checking that regularly. Um, once the season gets going, if we change something, I will probably, I will email you. Um, but it's just a good rule of them just to make sure that you have everything right to double check that. Um, micros and mini schedules, um, this is mostly for pre-K and micros. Those should be consistent. So if you have a 9 a.m. start time on Saturday, it should be 9 a.m. for the majority of the season. Um, there's a couple divisions where there's an odd number of divisions. And so if that's the case, then you may have one practice that may be a little different. Uh, we try not to do that, um, but just know that it's possible that like one may be different. But for the most part, you should have a consistent start time for all your games. Um, and then, yeah, change may occur. So just be double checking that. And then every site for you guys will have a lead trainer there. Your, your, your field will have a trainer and then you'll have a site coordinator. So don't be afraid to reach out to them if you have any issues on the day of. Um, I do check my email. I try my best to check my email. But if you email me at 9, nine o'clock on a Saturday and your session starts at 9 o'clock with an urgent question, um, can't guarantee that I'll be able to respond to you before that, before your session starts. So your site coordinator is your friend. They can help you with any day of things. And then if it's something that needs to be fixed for a future season, shoot me an email. We can we can talk about that and see what we can do. And then here's kind of the Saturday format. You're going to get your equipment when you pick it up. Bring that to every Saturday. It's going to have all the stuff you need. You'll have a first aid kit. You'll have pennies. You'll have a game ball to use. You'll have cones. Um, and then you have like an extra. If you have too many jerseys, um, you'll keep those extras in case someone loses theirs. I get without fail, at least two emails um, a season with someone who has misplaced their jersey. Um, so if you have an extra one, don't throw it away. You may have someone on your team that needs an extra. Um, yeah. So for micros, um, micros team parents, this is for you. You'll have a trainer running your session, but just so you know what's going on. Um, it's seven Saturdays of 40 minutes, 45 minute sessions, and you'll have a co-ed team. Um, You'll do soccer related activities for the whole part of your session. Um, it's really hard to get a bunch of three year olds to have a structured scrimmage. So we don't 
we don't do it. Um, you may have a, a situation where you're trying to like throw in a ball and have a bunch of balls going and see who can, you know, shoot it in the net. Um, you may do that, but it's not going to be a 4v4 team versus team scrimmage at the micros level. Um, and then your job is just to assist. Um, the trainer will do all the coaching for you, but it's really hard for one trainer to manage as many kids as you have on your team. Um, so just be there to help however they need. They may need you to pick up a cone for them. They may need you to um, figure out whose kid is crying and, and get them to their parent. Uh, it'll be easy stuff like that. If you have to miss a Saturday, we do need it. We do need someone on the field with the trainer. Um, it's not the end of the world. If you have to miss, you'll just want to send out an email to your team parents, letting them know, and then ask someone to fill in for you. Um, since they don't have to coach anything, usually someone volunteers and it's not a problem. Um, but just keep me posted on that. If, if no one volunteers, we can, we can figure something out. Um, and then for pre-K and kindergarten, this goes back and forth. The kindergarten, we started doing 4 before games earlier on um, to prepare for Rec 1. So if you coached in the past, this may be a little different. We started it last season to kind of jumpstart and see how things went. But for pre-K, you'll have 70, 70 well, you'll have seven Saturday sessions, um, 50 to 55 minutes. Um, you'll have a trainer for the first three weeks, and they'll run the session for you. So it'll be the same format as the micros coaches. They'll be there to assist and do you know things here and there if they need. Weeks four through seven, you'll then take over. You'll be paired with another coach. So there'll be two teams on your field and the two of you can kind of work together to kind of run that thing. We'll have, again, session plans for you to follow. You don't have to plan anything on our website. Everything's planned out, detail to detail, it's very, very specific. So um, just follow that, you'll be fine. And then for kindergarten, you'll do 44 games starting earlier on in the season. And I'll send out an email out kind of explaining that more. Um, we want it to kind of mimic what Rec 1 will look like. So for the first two or three, when you have a trainer, you'll do um, a session and then you'll jump into 44 games. And then weeks four through seven, when you take over, you'll just do 4v4 games. Um, so it'll be the same layout as Rec 1, but you won't have referee. It'll be parent coach. And it'll be your kind of um, time to help them figure out, you know, how to play it. That way, when they get to Rec 1, they're kind of set and they know what's going on a little bit. Um, that structure is again, 10, 10 minute quarters, uh, four of them after the second quarter, you do a halftime, um, and then you can sub on the quarter. So you, the easiest way to do this, especially if you have eight players on your team, which we tried really hard to do. Some of you might have nine, um, but if you have eight players on your team, you have one group of players who play the first and the second quarter, and you have the second group of players who play the third and the fourth quarter. Um, that way you don't have to sub anyone. Um, you just have to help them. Did it go out of bounds? Who's going to kick it in? Um, did it go out of bounds? Is it going to be a goal kick? Every time a goal scores, it's going to start in the middle, things like that. And again, all of these rules, all these procedures are on our website. Um, we have all the materials that explain everything. So you don't have to go into anything blind. Um, it's listed all out for you. Um, and then I just explained this. Yep. 44 games. Trainer will be there for the first three weeks. Then after that, it'll be all you. Uh, explain this a little bit too. You'll you'll have your team split into two groups. You'll have your first group of four and your second group of four. Um, you'll play against the other team that's on your field. Um, you can use your scrimmage vest because you only get jerseys in one color. So the, the pennies that are in your bag, one team will just have to put them on. Um, and then you help manage that on your field. That's kind of a picture you can use. I don't know how, how good that is. If you can see what's going on. Um, but you'll have one field over here with one team. And you'll have one field over here with the other team. Um, our primary goal is fun. I talked to this at the beginning, but it's been really hard to get kindergartners to, to do something super structured or to figure out the tactics of soccer or to do really technical drills. Like they're there to have a good time. They registered because they love the sport. Um, and most of the time you're just going to have kids running around chasing the ball. Um, there are things you can do to try and start implementing different structures like you can play in a diamond you can set up the cones in a diamond shape and have them stand there and kind of know what position they have on the field but I guarantee you as soon as you say go they're gonna just run after the ball so don't stress about it if like it's not a big deal like it's to be expected um and so just let them have fun encourage it like your main job as the coach at this point is just to facilitate fun to keep kids safe um, and to allow them to have a good positive experience so that they come back. And then as they get older, um, they grow a passion for the game and then they learn more and that's when they can kind of 
you know, get more into the specifics of the sport. Um, and then, yeah, rotate players in. Don't stop unless it's necessary. So try not to stop the game over and over again. Let them play. Let it kind of, you know, pan out how it pans out. And then you can have a halftime after the second quarter. Uh, this is for pre-K. So pre-K, you'll have your session for the beginning. And then at the end, so your session will be the kind of game-related activities that'll be there, like um, capture the flag, green, red light, green light, those kind of games. And then for the second half, you'll do 4v4 games um, with the other team that's there. Um, it'll be less structured than the kindergarten. And that's kind of when we say, keep the game going. If the ball goes out, you're not going to have to do a restart. Don't put the ball on the ground, have them kick it in, just roll another ball and get them playing. Um, and then you guys can manipulate restarts as needed. If there's one player that's not touching the ball very much and these don't seem very involved because maybe they're not as fast or not, you know, as engaged when the ball goes out, maybe roll the ball to them a couple of times so that they can kind of be in the game and have a good time too. And then troubleshooting this one, mainly for kindergarten, um, mostly for rec one. So if this doesn't apply to you, that's okay. Um, but if you show up to a, a game for kindergarten, you're supposed to do 4v4, but your team only has three players, um, that's when you and the coach kind of get together and mix your players together. It's not super important that it's this team versus this team. What's important is that the kids are playing and having a good time. So share players, borrow players. If if your team is killing the other team by a lot, maybe you know mix things up, um, kind of manipulate the game that way. At the end of the day, we just want it to be a positive experience for all the kids involved, not just the team that's winning, but the team that has more players. You want everyone to have a good, positive experience. Um, and then if a child seems disinterested, you know, try and bring them in, try and be positive, encourage them. There's going to be kids that are really, really into it and need no encouragement, and you're going to have kids on your team that maybe need more encouragement. So just be that for them um, and try and get them as involved as possible. Uh, just a couple of things in, that we kind of touched on already, but just some more specifics. Um, if it doesn't look super pretty, that's okay. Um, if they're all bunched up and one player is dribbling and the other person kicking it out of bounds, like that's going to happen. Um, they're five, they're six years old. Like it's okay. Like don't stress about it. Just have a good time. The kids are having a good time. Um, and that's the main idea. So, um, and then if they don't listen to your directions while playing, don't worry about it. That's the other thing. Um, Kids are going to be kids. It's going to be hard to wrangle in a bunch of five and six year olds. So let, don't get too high in the highs and don't get too low in the lows. Like you're going to have really great moments with your team and you may have some not great moments with your team and try just to be that middle ground for people. Um, that way, you know, nothing gets too crazy. And then just modeling appropriate behavior as the coach, as your, as the representation of like our club and um, as the adult for these kids, just make sure that you're modeling appropriate behavior. Um, you're responsible for the team and fan conduct. So this includes the parents. It sh nothing should get too crazy at this level. Um, really not even at the rec one level. Um, but we put it in here just to make sure that you guys know, like, it's your job to kind of help us facilitate things. If things are getting out of hand or there is a coach that's kind of not acting right, um, kind of mediate the situation and then bring me into it as needed. If I need to be sent an email, let me know what's happened. Um, so that I'm in the know and I can maybe go to the game next week and facilitate that. Let me know, keep me in the loop. Um, but for the most part, as coaches, just try and keep your cool, try and be supportive, try and be encouraging. Again, the big idea is that we just want everyone to have a positive experience. Um, these kids are too young to have a negative experience because an adult like did X, Y, Z, right? So, um, just keep that in mind. It's for the kids. It should be fun. Um, say good game after the session and just make sure you clean up. Part of your job kind of that we emailed out and let you guys know is organizing a snack rotation for your team. Um, that's pretty simple. Um, if it, you were confused on that, just make sure a parent is bringing a snack each week. We don't want one parent to have to bring it every week. And we don't want there to be a week where, you know, kids don't get it because that is something they look forward to. Um, and so then on this end, just make sure that there's no trash being left behind um, because if every team leaves trash at the end of the day, it looks really bad. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Keep an eye out. And then again, report any serious issues. You can first report them to the lead trainer, the site coordinator that's at your field. If you want to also email me, you can do that. If you tell the site coordinator at your field, they're going to end up emailing me about it. Um, but just make sure you do one of those things so that I end up, you know, 
getting the information that I need. Um, and then again, just resources. So the Coaches Info Center, we talked about that's where you're going to want to go for all uh, of the things that you need. Materials, rules, regulations, session plans, that's where you find that. Um, videos, articles, if you have a session plan, but you're looking for more activities to do, we have a bunch of activities there. So we're not short on resources for you. Um, and then admin support, you can reach out to me, um, my name is Michaela or Mac, whichever you prefer. Um, this is my email. Most of you have it already. And then technical staff is Darren. If you need somebody else to reach out to, um, there's his email. So you can write that down. Again, this will be posted on the website for you to look at later if you need to. And then good luck. Again, just keep a healthy perspective. Your value to, the, to your kids, to your team, to the club is not in how you do or how successful you are as a coach. Um, but it's just that you're there. Um, allowing these kids to play, allowing them to have you know fun doing something they, they love. We understand that we cannot do this without you. Uh, we are a volunteer-run program, which means if we have no volunteers, we have no program. So um, just from us, thank you so much for volunteering. I know some of you were really eager to and were, you know, registered really early and some of you registered a week ago because your kid wasn't going to play if you didn't. Like, there's definitely two ends of the spectrum here and we really appreciate you no matter what end you fall on. Um, and then, yeah, just good luck. Um, I told you I was going to keep you too long, so I'm glad oh, someone just entered. Um, so that's kind of all I have for you. I'll go back to that page. Um, I have my next meeting in a little bit. I can answer a few questions. If it's a question that's specific to you or your team, um, I ask that you just email me because not everyone on here needs to kind of listen to that. But if you have one that's maybe generic that everyone would benefit from, go ahead and ask. I can take a few. Um, can't stay on too long, but um, definitely can take some. I think Ashley may have been in the chat answering questions, but I'll look in here. Make sure nothing got missed. Yeah, where can we get these slides? They'll be on the Loud and Soccer website. So in the same place that you go to for all the other resources, you'll be able to find this slide. So um, it'll be Loud and Soccer and then the Rec tab and then Coaches Info Center tab. That's where you can find that. Got it. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Elskin? Sorry if I did not pronounce it. Oh, name. no. I Yeah, thank you. Just a quick question on the equipment. Is the uh, the head coach supposed to go get that or is the trainer going to um, get yeah. that? Uh, yeah, so you'll want to pick up the equipment for your team. So um, that'll include your team jerseys, it'll include the pennies for your team, all that stuff. The trainer will have some things for the site specifically, but you're going to want to come get it for your team so that you have all the stuff for your specific players. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Hey, Mac, I have a quick question. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Yep. Um, so for the minis pre-K and kindergarten, that's just Saturdays, right? There's no weekday practice for that one? Pre-K is just Saturday. Kindergarten is the first year that they have a weekday practice. Because mine says like minis pre-K and kindergarten. Oh, minis. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So then it's just minis pre-K. Okay. Got it. So it would just be the Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the program is minis pre-K and kindergarten. And there's two divisions. One's pre-K, one's kindergarten. Got it, got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Tarun? Yeah, regarding snacks, like, uh, how do we know about any kind of any food restriction or something, like, you know, with, for kids and uh, any specific do's and don'ts, like, should or should not bring these items to kids? Yeah, I think your team will let you know. Like, when you email your team parents and try and set that up, I'm sure anyone who has an allergy will let you know that. And I would say maybe you stay away from big allergies that we know, like peanuts and stuff like that. But um, when you set that up with your team, you can always ask. And then that way, you know, for sure who has an allergy and who doesn't and what to stay away from. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Allison? Hey there, um, two quick questions. Yeah. Um, first one, I know you mentioned team schedules will be sent out shortly for games. What, when specifically did you say this week or next? March 27th, the game schedule will be posted. Okay, perfect. So we should go ahead and reach out to families and do the intro and just let them know that we'll have more to come on the game schedule. Yeah, you can send out that whole intro email and then you can include the date that that's going to be posted because once we post it, they'll all be able to see it in their in their account. So you can just let them know when to, they can be expecting to look for that. Perfect. That sounds good. And then one other quick question. Yeah. Um, micro minis i think i saw you mentioned that there will always be a trainer there did i get that correct 
for all the games? The micros teams have a trainer all seven weeks, and then the pre-K kindergarten teams have a trainer for the first three weeks. Okay, gotcha. And they're pretty much facilitating most of it when they're there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when there's a trainer there, all you have to do is assist them. Again, like I said, like they may have you pick up some cones for them or or help out here or there, but they'll be running the actual training part. Okay, awesome. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? If, yeah, Mike, go if, ahead. If you, yeah, thank you. If you just need uh, someone there to fetch balls, not necessarily be an assistant coach, but just someone maybe just rebounding balls, <laughs> do they need to go through the safe sport training or can they just be there? Yeah, I would say if it's every now and then doing something simple like that, no. Um, but if they're going to be kind of established on the team as someone who's helping and being involved, then I would say just get them registered on, this, on the uh, website. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, so on the 27th as well, will we know where we're supposed to be on for Saturdays? Will it be like at each Saturday we'll be at the same location or how do we know? Like, Yeah, you'll be at the same place all seven Saturdays um, and generally be at the same time all Saturdays and that'll all be listed in your schedule. So once that game schedule is posted, you'll see uh, Saturdays week one through seven and all the information will be there for you. Okay, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Um, the training sessions that are happening this week that we can go observe, are those mandatory? Nope. It's just for anyone who would like to come see a session. If they feel like they would benefit from that, then that's an option for, that you have, but you don't have to come. No. Okay. And what about, um, how would we know if we did the background check and the safe sport training? The safe sport training, you can go ahead. I think it's on your account. You can do it through there. You can email me if you have a specific question about that because I'm not super familiar with it, but we can figure it out. The safe sport training changes every season and it can be a little confusing, but um, the background check should have been done when you registered. So don't worry about that one. Um, with safe sport, if you're doing other sports that require safe sport, can we transfer from other sports or can we transfer from Loudon to soccer to other sports as well? Yeah, it should be all inclusive. So you don't have to actually post it anywhere, but if you're in safe sport, cause it's a whole separate like program, it's like not through us. So it, it's good for everything. If you've already done it for something else, then you're good. Tyler? Yes, um, I was gonna ask, well, I asked in the chat, uh, but is it typically the same trainer at each site each week or is it gonna be like a different trainer each week? Um, I know kids like consistency, so just curious about that. Yeah, yeah, we try to have the same trainer. Um, sometimes someone, you know, gets sick or has a vacation or can't make it. So on those weeks, you'll have a sub for them. But typically, we try and have the same trainer for the all all the weeks. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Again, you can also email me. Um, if you have any specific questions, like I'll get back to your email and we can talk there too. But if there's nothing else, then I'll let you guys go. I think I just saw. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for coming on. Um, I know there's a lot of different things you guys could be doing tonight. So I just appreciate it. Hopefully this was informative and helps you guys feel a little more comfortable about going into the season. Um, but yeah, I'm here for you all season long. So if you need something or have a question or you know, need anything from me, just let me know and we'll do our best to help you out. But all right, I'll let you guys go. Um, have a great night. I'll see you guys throughout the season. Bye. Thank you.